everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 7 of my Higurashi When They Cry Miyakashi Let's Play. In the last episode, we had the return of Keichi, and we are now in the quote-unquote present time, which means that we are going to get more into the events of chapter 2 and what really happened. So, we just had the Watanagashi festival happen. We have Shion start to f hear the, the footsteps more and start to believe it's Oyashiro, and I am so excited to see what's going to happen next. So, without further ado, let's jump back into it. My relatives gathered at the Sonozaki house after the festival to have a little party. I mingled with my uncles and had fun. I was trying to get rid of my eerie memories of the ritual storehouse. Mion was acting as a successor, so I tried to stay away from her. I'm sure she would feel weird if I talked to her in a formal way. In consideration of the hag's old age, we ended the party around 11 p.m. We all helped clean up, with the women washing the dishes in the kitchen, and the men folding the tables and putting them away in a storehouse. It only took about 30 minutes, then everyone left, one after another. By then, Mion was no longer acting as the Sonazaki successor and was back to being her normal self. Maybe I overexerted a little. I was lying on the tatami floor. Kasai asked if I could get in the car, so I told him I'd rather not move anymore. Oh, this is what I'm excited about. So we're going to get Shion and Mion together. And hopefully we can find out what the hell is going to be going on with these two. ここでじゃあ、カサイさん。シオンは今夜はうちで預かります。わかりました。では、よろしくお願いいたします。ほら、肩を貸すから奥に行こう。ミオンさん、I my alter ego told me that I'm in a demon's stomach. I wouldn't have woken up if I hadn't heard that voice. I might not have woken up at all. Here we go. It is going down, I feel like, this episode. Let's see that demon. Come on. I didn't remember much after that. I was probably brought to Mion's room and immediately crawled into the futon. After a while, Mion got her futon ready next to me, turned the lights off and went to sleep. At least, that's what I thought. I got up and turned the lights on. Mion's futon was empty. The futon felt cold. Mion must have left it a while ago. Did she go to the bathroom? No, the closest bathroom was right there down the hallway. The light in the bathroom was off. Where did she go? The ticking of the clock was loud and annoying in the silence. The hands pointed to a little before 3 a.m. I was left alone all of a sudden, in this late night. I felt the eeriness of the ritual storehouse coming back to me, after almost managing to forget it in the ruckus earlier. I tried to sense my surroundings. In this house, there shouldn't be an eerie atmosphere, strange noises, or footsteps. I stepped out into the freezing cold hallway to look for Mion. When I did, I immediately noticed light coming from one of the nearby rooms. That room belonged to the hag. The hag went to sleep early and woke up early. She was very strict about her bedtime, so it was strange to see her light on in the middle of the night. I could hear voices, too. Those voices belonged to the hag and Mion. I creeped up to the room and listened to their conversation. Since it was the middle of the night, 
I could hear their words very clearly. Mion's voice sounded as cold as the one I'd heard down in the torture room. I held my breath. Ooh. My heart almost stopped. Oyashiro-sama got angry. The police are investigating. It's probably Takano-san. And what day was it today? Those words told me that something was happening. My teeth started to chatter. I desperately tried to stop them. I felt like my body was swelling up suddenly. I could no longer hear as well. Calm down. Breathe. Listen more carefully. According to Mion and the Hag's conversation, another incident definitely took place. The victims were Takano-san and Tomotake-san. From what I could tell, both Mion and the Hag thought it made sense that whatever it was happened to them. No, 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 no. I needed to think more calmly. They did say they deserved it for making Oyashiro-sama angry. Did they say Takano-san and Tomotake-san made Oyashiro-sama angry? How did they make Oyashiro-sama angry? They knew. My body started to shake. They knew we snuck into the ritual storehouse. Then would that mean Keichi and I were also subject to Oyashiro-sama's curse? Suddenly a phone rang. The phone was by the front door. The front door was opposite of the hag's room, farther down the hall. The ringing echoed throughout the long hallway. It sounded so eerie, almost like it was coming from hell. That was when I felt someone behind me. Of course, there was nobody there when I turned around. But there was someone there a moment ago. I didn't know if it was Satoshi-kun. I didn't sense any emotion, so I couldn't tell. I also didn't know how long it had been there. It was as if somebody was watching me and listening on their conversation. That was the feeling I got. It couldn't be Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun would never be that intimidating or scary. I love how quickly things are, like, starting in this episode. My mind turned all red like it was surfaced with blood. I remembered what Rena Ryugu said on that rainy day. If Oyashiro-sama wasn't angry, nobody would follow me. So what did this mean? Ever since we snuck into the shrine storage, something had been following me. What is it? Calm down, calm down. That's right, Rena wasn't talking about me. She was talking about Satoshi-kun. That's what happened to Satoshi-kun. Satoshi-kun ga taiken shiteiru koto wa subete Oyashiro-sama no tatari no maebure na no. That's right. That's why he encountered the curse of Oyashiro-sama. Dare ka ga touku kara jitto ukagatte iru. Dare ka ga zutto tsukete kuru. A creepy feeling crawled up and spread across my back. Dare ka ga itsu mo I swallowed loudly. It's almost as though Rena Ryugu was predicting what would happen to me. Had Rena been talking about Satoshi-kun back then? Or has she actually been talking about me? I knew by now that there was no mistake. No matter how I looked at it, she had been talking about me. Yes, me. It had been about me. The curse of Oyashiro-sama. What is the curse of Oyashiro-sama? That was when I actually felt something for real. Someone grabbed my collar. <laughs> no, vo no voice came out. I wanted to scream, but all I could do was open and close my mouth as if something was stuck in my throat. 
Oh, it was Mion. She looked even colder than how she looked in the underground torture room. It only made sense that she'd come out in the hallway to answer the phone. I tried to come up with an excuse. However, the way Mion looked at me was so cold. Even if I really had run into her by accident, I could tell by the look in her eyes that she wouldn't believe me. I felt cold sweat all over my body. I couldn't even move my fingers. I apologized. I could have said something to get myself out of the situation when the apology came out first. But Mion didn't appear to hear me. She walked to the front door, still holding my collar. The phone was still ringing. A normal person doesn't usually let a phone ring so long at this time of night. The phone call itself didn't seem real to me. It's, it's bothering me too. I'm like, somebody please pick up that phone. Mion picked up the phone. Mion desu. Hmm. So desu ka. Wakarimashita. Sochira no taiyo wa yoroshiko onegai shimasu. Sore kara... Issai no kuchi fuji o yoroshiko onegai shimasu. Eh. Dewa. Mion put down the phone after a short conversation. What did she mean, make sure nobody talks about this? Who called, anyway? Mion put her forehead to mine and spoke to me. Oh. Okay, here we go. Oh, I, I didn't want to believe that it was Mion, but... Which conversation was she asking me about? Well, she had, uh, she had to be talking about the one with the hag. If I said yes, what would happen to me? <laughs> Mio pulled my collar, pressed her nose on mine, and continued to speak. Yeah, kind of the opposite of when Shion had her, uh, you know, her hands around Mion's throat, and now it's the opposite. <laughs> It was like I was talking to myself in a mirror. But what I was saying in the mirror was ever so cold. Oh,ね。お、やしろ様のたたりって何です。富武さんは自らの手で喉をかきむしってお亡くなりになりました。高野さんは遠くの山奥でドラム缶に詰められて焼き殺されたそうで。Tomitaka-san clawed at his own throat until he died? What? Takano-san was burned to death in an oil drum? What? What? I felt something furry crawl up my spine. I also felt like my stomach was turning upside down. I didn't feel any strength in my legs. If Mion let go of my collar, I'd probably collapse on the spot. I'm asking you because I don't know. Please don't talk as if I already know the answer. My heart was pounding. I felt that my next breath would be so bloody and hot that I'd choke on it. It's because they made Oyashiro-sama angry. The first year, it was the manager of the damn construction site. The second year, it was the traitors to the village. The third year, it was the pacifist. The fourth year, it was the relatives of the traitors. I'd always thought the victims were people who had something to do with the dam conflict. Since I didn't do anything against the village during the dam conflict, I assumed I was safe. I should have known. I should have known everything would be the curse of Oyoshirasama. I knew Oyoshirasama's anger was the curse of Oyoshirasama. I knew Oyoshirasama would get angry if I snuck into the ritual storehouse. But since I wasn't held responsible in any way for the damn conflict, I never thought I would be a victim of the curse. Did I ever think there would be an incident in the fifth year? Did I ever think I'd be the victim of that fifth year incident? Tomotake-san snuck into the storehouse, and he clawed at his own throat until he died. Takano-san was burned to death in an oil drum. It must be a lie. It couldn't be true. Even if it was forbidden, it was just a space for storing some old torture implements. How could they be killed for just sneaking in there? Especially in such gruesome ways. 
But I thought about it again and realized that those people were absolutely capable of doing things like that. The main Sonozaki family was capable of it. The Sonozaki family had been pulling the strings behind the series of mysterious deaths. They could do it. The Sonozaki family even kidnapped the grandson of the Minister of Construction during the dam conflict. They could do it. The Sonozaki family made Satoshi couldn't disappear completely. They could do it. Oh, 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 now is Shion gonna get mad? What, what's, okay, or, okay. Here we go. Mio leaned against me before falling onto the cold hallway floor. She collapsed rather violently. Oh, she hit her with the stun gun! Shit. Soon as it's like, Satoshi is like, just her trigger. Oh, okay. I usually didn't go to sleep with my stun gun. But since I was too tired and sleepy to get ready for bed, I still had it on me. I had my stun gun on me. I finally understood. I didn't know who killed them exactly. Whose idea it was or who ordered it. I didn't even know who was actually involved. But Mion and the Hag knew everything. Satoshi-kun. Now I finally know. Okay, so if Mion did actually do the things, then this is probably where Mion's like, Okay, you done fucked up, and you're gonna be going to timeout in the cage in the torture room, and then those phone calls that, uh, that Keiichi gets later, those are the ones for Mion. Because I find it hard to believe that Mion and Oreo are gonna let Shion just kind of walk away from this. Now I know what I need to do. I will settle the score for you, Satoshi-kun. I will avenge you, Satoshi-kun. Or maybe Shion freaking does the- like, maybe she's the one who traps Mion in the basement. I don't know how she'd be able to do it, but... I won't be killed like you, Satoshi-kun. I walked into the hag's room. <gasps> she's gonna kill her! She was sitting up to take some medicine. Her back was turned to me. Mion and I are twins. If I acted like her, the hag wouldn't notice the difference. Well, I mean, you gotta put your hair up in a different way. You're wearing different clothes. I didn't think she ever suspected me. I put my stun gun to her neck and pulled the trigger. Oh, shit! Shield's going full on, like, Avenger right now. Damn. Damn. I'm loving this already. I mean, I don't because I like Mion, but I heard an indescribable electric sound and the hag's lights went out. She fell in a twisted position. I didn't know how long it would take a person to regain their freedom of movement after getting knocked out with a stun gun. So I had to restrain them before they woke back up. Okay! Okay, so now I'm thinking... Here I've been thinking that it was actually, like... It was Shion who did the, the things that, in Chapter 2. And I'm not just saying that because I want to believe that Mion is innocent in this, because Mion is not completely, uh, you know, without some blame. But... You know, I, I was thinking about it um, between the two episodes that I've been playing. And at the end of chapter two, when Shion is like freaking out, when Mion is taking Keiichi to be tortured. But the thing is, like, Shion doesn't really have that much of an emotional connection to him. So I'm wondering if maybe Shion does, did, like, take Mion and, and lock her up in the torture room. And... She's like, I'm Mion now, you're Shion. Like, we're gonna be... Like, I'm taking the role of you now. So then when... Quote-unquote, Shion is like screaming and begging Mion not to torture Keiichi. If it was the other way around, it's actually Mion who's in the cage. This is, this is my theory. This is what I think is gonna happen. I was unbelievably calm. The key to the underground torture room was in the forbidden drawer that only the head of the family could access. Yes! Yes, I am like, I am so happy that I think I'm actually right about something here. I'd never looked for the drawer before, but I found it exactly where I thought it would be. The key was on a keychain with several of its sisters. Each key had a little plaque on it that said what it was used for. And then that's why, like, Shion, disguised as Mion, you know, was like begging, having Shion slash Mion. This is very confusing for me to stay out loud beg for forgiveness because she believes Mion is behind Satoshi's disappearance and that's why she's like you need to say you're lower in dirt you need to you need to apologize and I need to believe that you're being honest about it they were all in Mion's handwriting she was an idiot for being so conscientious but it sure helped me out I put the keychain in my pocket and headed to the outdoor storeroom to find a cart 
I found a large flashlight there as well. There was a strap on the flashlight, so I could put it on my shoulder. That way I'd have both hands free to carry Mion and the hag. I loaded Mion and then our grandmother onto the cart and carried them to the underground torture room. I was prepared to use the stun gun again if they woke up while I was working. Now I'm like going in my head and I'm thinking of all the things that happened... You know... All the things that happened at the end of chapter 2, so all that time that we thought we were talking to Mion, it was... It was Shion. That's insane. But it was more powerful than I imagined, and the hag showed no signs of walking. And then that's why, that's the reason that when she said in the last episode where she said, you know, why did the boy I love have to disappear and you still get Keiichi? She's like bitter about that. So that was her twisted way of being like, I'm going to take the boy you love away from you and you're going to watch it happen because you did the same with the boy that I love. This was the sun gun Kasai specifically ordered for me when I told him I wanted a powerful one. I remembered him telling me it was an illegally modified stun gun and that I should never use it just for fun. I used my flashlight to find the light switch. I found it easily and turned it on. All the lights went on in the basement. Although there was now illumination, it was very dim. I moved quickly so as to finish what I needed to do before they woke up. I decided to put Mion in a cell beyond the torture room. The lights in the torture room were so bright that it was like daylight. There was a door there. I was fairly certain the cells were on the other side of that door. Although I'm wondering why did Shion... Why did Shion at the last second decide to let Keiichi live? I'm wondering if maybe as she was about to torture Keiichi, maybe she saw a flash of Satoshi behind him or something, and she kind of had a moment of clarity. The proper key was here. The keys made a tinkling sound. I felt cold air coming in through the gap in the door. There must be a huge opening on the other side. I opened the door and I saw nothing but darkness. I felt along the wall to find a light switch. I turned the switch on, and the light bulbs lit up, revealing a huge rocky cave. It didn't look like a natural cave. It looked more like an air raid shelter. There were several hollow openings with bars across them. Those were the cells. I walked up to the closest cell and checked to see if it was strong enough to confine her. I pushed and pulled on the bars. I rammed against them with all my weight and decided they were perfectly sturdy. This was secure enough to be called a cell. I opened the lock and carried Mion in. I wasn't particularly strong, just average. I never thought I was strong enough to carry a whole person. But now I didn't need to pretend to be weak. I could easily lift and drag their bodies. I put Mion in the cell. She seemed to moan a little. I didn't need to check to make sure. The effect of my stun gun was wearing off. I closed the bars and turned the key in the lock. Then I ran to the hag, who must have been starting to wake up too. Fortunately, there was no signs of her regaining consciousness. Maybe the difference in age had something to do with it. I looked for a table to restrain her on. I found a wheelchair with restraints for the hands and feet. I put the hag in it. Oh damn, she's going to torture her. Maybe for information, or maybe just be maybe just for revenge. Of course, she didn't resist, but her dead weight made it seem like she was a huge French doll, but one made of flesh. I put her hands on the armrests and restrained them at the wrist with the metal rings and hinges. I did the same with her feet. This must have been a wheelchair specifically remodeled to restrain a person. Other than the restraints, it was a regular wheelchair. I waited for the hag to wake up. I had so many things I wanted to ask her. I didn't think she'd answer honestly, but I had plenty of tools to make her talk. So now that now that it seems like my hypothesis is correct, here's that whole thing where it's like, Mion may have the demon on her back, but Shion is the true, she has the true demon inside of her. Maybe she was meant to be the, uh, the demon of the Sonazaki family all along, and it was never meant to be Mion, because Mion... She's good at acting the part when she needs to, but it seems like she's just too nice of a person to really be this as ruthless as she owned. I was in no rush. When the hag had a concern, relatives took care of the problem. That was how it worked in the Sonazaki family. She was the leader of the family, so all the information they gathered would make its way to her. She must know everything that happened in Hinimizawa including the curse of Oyashiro-sama. 
Are we going to get some answers? Are we going to get some answers about whether it's actually a real curse or if it's the Sonazakis? I heard a noise from the cell. Mio must have woken up before the hag did. Speaking of the hag, she didn't seem like she was about to wake up anytime soon. But she was restrained even if she did, so I had no need to fear. I left the hag there and headed for the cell. Sion. Kore wa... Nan no mane desu ka? She talked like the successor, but she also sounded frightened. She obviously understood the situation she was in right now. Ohayo, Mion. Masaka jibun ga tojiko merare rukoto ni naruto wa omoa nakatta? Sono zaki ke toshu daiko toshite meijimasu. Koko o... Kowairo ni hitotsu sugomi ga kakemasu ne. Toshu sama wa motto gouman na iikata o shinaki a ne. Motto mo... そういう言い方ができたとしても、今のあんたは滑稽なだけなんだけどさ。I'm just thinking, poor Mion. All this wouldn't have happened if Mion hadn't been nice and just let her stay at her place. She hadn't let her stay at the house. None of this. She wouldn't have overheard the conversation. None of this would have happened. <laughs> There was nothing funny about it, but I wanted to intimidate Mion. My laughter echoed throughout the cave. It was artificial and meaningless laughter. I heard it over and over as it echoed. It sounded as if I wasn't the only one laughing. I couldn't stand it, so I stopped. Silence filled the air. That silence almost hurt my ears, so I started to speak. Tomitake san to Takano san ga kotoshi no gisei ni naru to wa ne. Omo wa nakatta. Takano san no dorama kan ni tsumete yakikoroshita ってのもなかなかやるね。ま。あの人はそういう死に方を自分で希望してたっぽいからね。結構満足してるかもよ。ミオン didn't say anything. She just stared at me to see how I'd proceed. トミタケさんの自分で自分の喉を引き裂いたってのは何意識をおかしくさせるような怪しいお薬でも注射したのそれともそういう死に方に見せるような道具でもあるわけミオン didn't reply. I was smiling broadly, but I became impatient and finally kicked the bars. It made a violent noise. Mion jumped as if she was kicked directly. <laughs> Mion finally replied. She was odious, but at the same time sounded pitiful. Ne, Mion. Jiki Toshu sama. ここまで来ちゃったんだから教えてくださいな。えー、っと。I just, uh, I had just too many things I wanted to ask her. I wanted to ask her about me, about the incident, about the curse, about Satoshi kun. I didn't even know where to start. Before I asked her about those, I asked her one other thing. 私に対して、反抗的な態度をとっても何の得にもならないこと。理解。<笑> Mion glared at me silently. Because we were twins, I knew that was just a bluff. もうここまでやっちゃった以上、私も引っ込みがつかないんで。お姉も、私に容赦とか躊躇とか、そういうものをあまり期待しない方がいいかもです。Mion must have been feeling the cold sweat on her face. Although the light was dim, I could tell she was frightened. じゃあ聞くよ。ひなみざわ村連続開始事件。通称親代様のたたりこれってどういう意味があるのやっぱりダム戦争のけじめってやつ私はうん多分そうだと思ってる Mion sounded a little confused but she answered I felt satisfaction now that we were communicating I continued with a smile 思ってるって言い方が少し頼りないねそのあたりの事情は詳しくないのシオンだって分かってるでしょう。次期当主なんて、バッチャの取り次ぎに過ぎないよ。Yeah, right. その当主様と意志を疎通させて、維新伝心なのが、次期当主様の役目でしょ取り次ぎに過ぎないなんて信じると思ういつも身近にいる私だって、たまにバッチャが何を考えてるのか分からない時があるもん。何でもかんでも私が理解してるわけじゃない。じゃあ、親代様のたたりってのは
あいつが全部独断で決めてるわけなんだ次期当主様と相談して決めてるのかと思ったよやばい話は全部バッチャが一人で決めてる私なんか預かり知る余地もないでもばあさんの独断だとしたってあいつはあんたを返してやり取りしてるわけでしょそのあんたが何も知らないなんてあるはず違うよ私なんかを返していない私にだってよくわからないんだけど私が陽の部分を取り継いでるとしたら陰の部分を取り継いでる誰かがいると思う誰その影の部分の取り継ぎって知らない誰かを招いて話してるとことか電話をしているとことか見たことない強いて言えば毎年親代様のたたりの時期になると連絡量がどっと増える相手ねわかんない心当たりなんかないよミオンシャクヘッドまあいいやじゃあ質問を変えるね今年のたたりの富武さんと高野さんはダム戦争に直接関係してないのになぜ犠牲に選ばれたのやっぱり西宮殿に忍び込んだから As soon as Mion heard the words ritual storehouse, her expression shifted. Saigoden? Fulte Jinja no Saigoden o k a s t a n Aria. Shitter to Bakari. Sonda Koto Stara. Baka. Tosen Dio. Mion muttered bitterly while shaking her head repeatedly. Mion's reaction made me realize the true meaning of the forbidden storehouse for ritual implements. The ritual storehouse is a sacred building, so nobody can go inside. The curse will fall upon anyone who disobeys. Any child would know that rule. However, just because they knew about it didn't mean that they all believed in it. Although they were told they would be cursed, most of the kids actually enjoyed hearing the stories. They simply didn't believe it was true. However, Mion's reaction told me it absolutely was. If they actually did that, of course something would happen to them. She was saying that as if someone snuck into the ritual storehouse, that person should be killed. I go back to the store, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I don't think その程度の認識じゃなかったでしたっけシオンがよく知らないだけだよすみませんねよく知らなくて説明をいただいてもよろしいですかそりゃシオンの言う通り子供の世界ではヤバいとかタタリがあるとか言ったってどうせ迷信に過ぎないだろうでも大人にバレたらかなり怒られるんだろうなって程度の認識だと思うでもね雛見沢の子老たちにとってはそんな甘いものじゃないのミオン explained to me how the elderly people blindly believe in Oishiro Sama and how sacred the festivals are to them It's probably something the younger generations would never understand but they're possessed by a very strong deeply rooted devotion toward Oishiro Sama Mion then went on to tell me how sinful it was to violate the rule of the ritual storehouse. I just couldn't believe things like that were still going on even in the modern day. I couldn't even reply appropriately. But even if it was unbelievable, I couldn't ignore what I was hearing from my twin sister. Oh man, I think like this is my favorite part of this chapter so far because I feel like we're finally getting somewhere. The big question though is like Mion said, I'm assuming Mion's telling the truth. Is someone else takes care of the underside of things. So that person decides who the、uh, victims are going to be. So that's the big question is who is this person? They're the ones who are kind of behind everything in conjunction with the Sonazaki. So who is this person who's calling the shots on who's going to die? Naruhodo ne. Demo sa mion. Tatari de hitori ga shindara. Sore o so sai suri mi de hitori o ike nie ni suru no ga ruru ja nakata ke. いけにえの死体は出ないなのに今回は2人とも死体が出ちゃってるんだけどそのあたりはどう見るミオン doesn't know that besides Takano san and Tomitake san, Keiichi and I also snuck into the ritual storehouse. 
so I tried to lead her a little. Mion hesitated a little first and then started to speak. Really? You've trapped your sister in a cage and you're like, I won't get mad. Hmm? So she did know about it. So Mion straight up lied. She was like, I didn't know about the storehouse. And then she's like, well, but four people snuck in. Oh, see, no. Oh, man, this is make me think. So at what happened at the end of, of the second chapter, so Mion, quote unquote, slipped away, but then she supposedly died while she was climbing the ladder. And then Shion got pushed out of her apartment's balcony. And then Mion, I'm saying these all in quotation marks, you can't, you guys can't see it. Mion came to visit Keiichi and stabbed him, and then came back and finished him off in the hospital. That's the big thing is, what's the deal with all that? Because I can understand this part, so it seems pretty obvious. Is that Shion is acting as Mion, lured Keiichi, Enrica, and Sadako. But then all that stuff afterwards, I don't know how that is possible, but I'm... I'm so excited to find out what happened there. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to keep going, man. I am, like, so into it now. I need to know more. Mion's words were stuck in my head. If those two dead bodies were the result of the curse, then there should be two sacrifices to calm Oyashiro-sama's anger. The four of us snuck into the shrine storage together. It was a simple equation. Did that mean that Keiichi and I were in danger? I got drunk, fell asleep, and decided to stay overnight. Was that because of the alcohol? Or did someone put a drug in my drink? It's not like me to get drunk and spend a night at the hag's house. I wanted to forget about what happened in that eerie storehouse, so I drank too much. But it really was strange for me to get that drunk. Maybe. It was a good thing I woke up in the middle of the night. Oh, were they planning on... Oh, so that they knew that she was the one that snuck into the storehouse. They were planning on getting to her, but she got to them first. I could have been the one to wake up in a cell. Sometimes it's hard to recognize danger when you avoid it accidentally. A part of me wanted to just laugh at the idea, but, an but another part felt frightened that I was so close to being on Mion in Mion's position. If my thinking was correct... I wonder how Keiichi Maibara was doing right now. I didn't see him in any of the cells, but that didn't guarantee his safety. Takano-san and Tomotake-san had been executed. There was a possibility that Keiichi could already be dead. But just like what happened to Satoshi-kun, it might only happen after a few days. When the sun rose, I was going to pretend to be Mion and head to her school. I was going to check if Keiichi Maibara was safe. If he had already disappeared, the enemy would come after me next. I'd have to be a decoy for myself. But if he was still safe, I'd need to keep my eyes on him. I was sure the enemy would come after that scatterbrain. If I became Mion, Shion would disappear. The enemy would think Shion had already been demoned away, and they'd concentrate on Keiichi. If nothing happened to Keiichi, that would also be fine. It would prove that nothing would happen to me either. The hag was still sleeping in the wheelchair. I was going to interrogate her. But actually, I wasn't expecting to learn that much. The woman who was also known as Empress Sonazaki probably wouldn't say a thing even if her fingers were cut off. Mio and her successor was the complete opposite. She spoke readily but didn't know too much about anything. Mion had said she was only a messenger and that someone else was taking care of problems on the underside. It was possible Mion had grown to be a good liar, and that she tried to deceive me with a straight face. But at the same time, I could see the hag not letting Mion get involved in the underside of the village. If I were her, I wouldn't have used Mion for that either. Unlike me, Mion was a nice person. 
While there were only ones and zeros in the world, she believed there were numbers with decimal points. In other words, she could never be cruel. If the hag thought the same way as I do, it was very possible. The one who took her, uh... The one who took care of problems on the underside, X, was the one who actually governed the curse of Oyashiro-sama. If the hag became concerned about something, X would deal with it, either directly or indirectly. Or maybe the hag and X would discuss the details first. But did X really exist? If he did, his place in the village hierarchy was a lot more important than that of the successor. And she on saying he... Who knows? It's like, could be a guy, could be a girl. Unlike Mion, who was too nice, he was discreet, cruel, and cunning. Furthermore, he was extremely close to the hag. Someone who would have a lot of contact with her just before it was time for the curse. Because of the way Tomotake-san died, it could be someone who regularly dealt with unusual drugs. He could be a member of a medical institution. Oh, was she thinking coach? Ah, uh, the director of the Erie Clinic. Erie? In this isolated village, Erie was famous for opening such a beautiful clinic and for working so hard for the villagers' sake. It is kind of, he does seem to pop up a lot around, you know, these kinds of things. I don't want to believe it's Coach. Yes, he's a pervert, but I want to believe he's a good person. The villagers liked his mature personality and really respected him. But then again, there is that whole thing about the drugs that were supposedly used you know, for um, Tomotake and maybe Keichi to claw out their throats. And there was that thing, the syringe that Mion was going to inject him, Keichi, with. So, hmm. Then there was also Eerie showing up um, in the white van at the end of chapter one, but that could also be because Keichi legit snapped, so it's hard to say. There's nothing scarier than a doctor who's also a murderer. If Eerie was the person behind the curse, all the mysterious deaths could be explained. However, there was only a slim chance of Eerie being X. The main reason being that the hag wouldn't trust him. Like many of the elderly, the hag doesn't like young people. I knew she would never trust him because of his age. Furthermore, she had openly criticized his behavior among the relatives once. Although Eerie was famous, he was an outsider after all. He wasn't born here. He tried to maintain a good relationship with the village as the director of the clinic, but that was just on the surface. I couldn't even imagine the hag telling him about her worries or about the village's underside. If she was as suspicious of others as I was, then she'd only gather trustworthy people to deal with that underside. You know, Shion goes on about how much she hates her grandma, but she seems to be a lot more like her grandma than Mion is. I appreciate the fact that Shion legit says, like, I'm not a nice person. <laughs> like, at least she's honest with herself. The first people that came to my mind were the leaders of the three families. Oh, and then who died? Rika died and Komiyashi, they both died, right? So. Leaving Rika Chama out, the head of the Kimiyoshi family was a strong possibility. He was the only one who could advise Empress Sonozaki. So maybe that's what her intention was. Maybe... Because Shion did call Keichi and she said Kimiyoshi died. So she could have, you know, tried to interrogate him to find the answers, didn't get what she was looking for, and then killed him. And then she did the same with Rika, where she lured her to the, uh, you know, to the house, tortured her for answers, and then killed her. And then, and then Sadako was just kind of like a unfortunate loose end. But you know Shion probably got a little bit of, like, enjoyment out of killing Sadako. They were of a similar age, and everyone knew that they were very close outside of the family councils. Furthermore, as the mayor, he often went to the Sonozaki house just before Watanagashi to discuss festival preparations. I could easily picture them talking privately. The one who executed the curse of Oyashiro-sama. The one who murdered Takano-san and Tomitake-san. The mastermind behind the series of the mysterious deaths that had been going for the past five years. Was he coming after me? Did he get to Satoshi-kun? When I thought about Satoshi-kun, I felt elevated. I was fearful of possibly being this year's victim until just a moment ago. I was scared that X was after me. But when I thought about it, I realized, whoever it was, this person had gotten Satoshi-kun. I'd looked so hard, but I couldn't find him. I'd almost forgotten about this enemy. 
For better or for worse, he was going to appear before me again. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find that enemy. But now he was trying to find me. That was it. I wasn't only being chased. I was chasing too. When I realized all this, I was no longer afraid of dying to the fifth year curse. It had become a game. I wasn't only being threatened. I was threatening too. Now was the time to settle the score for Satoshi-kun. Now was the time to awaken passions that had grown weak over the past year. I could feel righteous indignation and courage flare up within me. The only emotion that can defeat fear is anger. When my anger completely overtook my fear, I felt as if I was reborn. Here comes the demon! I kicked her wheelchair rather violently. But that didn't wake her up either. I grabbed her hair and pulled her head up. But even then, the hag still stayed silent with a straight face. Then I noticed something. I looked for an appropriate torture device. They were all large-scale, none of them being particularly handy. That's when I saw a cigarette lighter on a cushion in the tatami room. One of the relatives must have left it there. I lit the lighter. A huge flame appeared. I turned the lighter off and went back to the hag with it. I lit it in front of her eyes. There was still no response. I put the flame right under her nose without hesitation. The tip of the flame touched the tip of her nose. The flame must have burnt her nose hair. It smelled terrible. I was already certain, but I continued anyway. I brought the flame closer to her eye. Ugh! Her eyelid didn't move one bit. The flame burned her eyelashes, making it smell awful again. I turned the lighter off and then felt her throat and wrist. I didn't feel any warmth. I didn't feel a pulse either. There was no way she could pretend to be asleep while being burned. Even if she could endure the pain, anyone, re anyone would reflexively move their eyelids if a flame came close to their eyes. But she didn't. I turned the sink water on and aimed the end of a hose at the hag's face. The water pressure wasn't too high, but by squeezing the tip of the hose, I could make it squirt out. The water hit the hag in the face, but there was still no reaction. Shit. You've got to be kidding me. She's dead. The one who is at the center of everything is dead now. I knew she wouldn't talk. But I didn't expect her to end up dead. I'd never even thought of killing her. I walked around the room restlessly. I didn't feel guilty, but instead felt frustrated with what I'd done. Come on. I need to calm down. What do I need to be afraid of? Calm down. And stay cool. Calm down. Stay cool. I could feel my brain starting to calm down, and my emotions cooling down with it. She was my true enemy. It was just that I'd killed her before confronting her about it. Sooner or later, I would have killed her anyway. She wouldn't have said anything in the first place, so there wasn't really any reason why I should let her live. I didn't realize that until now, and that was why I got frustrated. <sighs> my revenge for Satoshi couldn't started with the unexpected death of my grandmother. It was such a strange feeling, like I was wearing sopping wet clothes. I replaced that feeling with anger. I couldn't forgive her. I couldn't forgive the hag for abusing the Hojo family, including Satoshi-kun for so many years. She cornered him psychologically as well as physically. She didn't deserve an easy death from a stun gun. I picked up a whip that was hanging on the wall. The whip was designed to make sure the person on the receiving end got seriously injured. I swung it up and then down. The sound reminded me of when I was a child hitting things with a jump rope I pretended it was a whip. But unlike then, I'd made a purple mark on the hag's face and reddish black blood started oozing out. I swung it up and then down again. This time the whip hit her in the head. Her hair flew in the air. I saw a bunch of her hair on the tip of the whip. At the end of the bunch of hair, ooh, there was a piece of her skin. 
Seeing the whip had ripped part of her scalp off. I continued to hit her with the whip. I didn't bother removing the hair beforehand. The tip of the whip was divided into many points, with each point having a fish hook on the end. Oh, Jesus. Those hooks added to the speed of the whip not only scratched the victim, but tore their skin as well. The hag's hair was all messed up and her face was getting bloody. She'd started to look like a real demon. I stopped the whipping. Not because my arm was tired, but because I couldn't stand the feeling of her hair on the tip touching me every time I swung the whip. I threw the whip at the hag. Breathing heavily, I realized I was covered in her hair. It almost felt like thousands of maggots crawling all over me. I wonder if that's like a, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like an allegory for, you know, the grandma be, be like, basically being a part of her as much as she doesn't want to believe it. It's just like the grandma is on her and, the, you know, all this stuff about the grandma being a demon. Shion is a demon. The grandma and Shion having these, like, um, similarities. You know, the same blood and everything, but Shion doesn't want to believe that. <sighs> I put my hands on my knees and exhaled roughly. It was then that I noticed it. I perked up and turned around. Oh, there it is. The person who had been watching me since I snuck into the shrine storage. I sensed this person sitting in the tatami room. It enjoyed watching me torture my grandmother. An overwhelming emotion started to swallow me up. I tried desperately not to feel it. It was just there. Just like Satoshi Kun, it was just there. It was extremely uncomfortable to have it just be there. I smiled boldly. And yet I could feel my body shivering. Here's my question. Is Mion able to see all of this happen? Because she's got to be like, holy shit, she has snapped. And again, I imagine that if Mion saw Shion just attacking her grandma, she probably would have, like, screamed or said something. It was just my imagination. It couldn't be the curse of Oyashiro-sama. The curse couldn't be real. Everything was done by humans. They made everything look like it was a curse. No matter what I said, nothing happened. It was like trying to communicate with an insect. I felt like I was staring at a spider in the middle of its web, and the spider was staring back. <laughs> I turned to the hag in the wheelchair. I couldn't leave her body here forever. If I don't need to make her death known, then it should be quick, and it's best if a body doesn't exist. Not even in the secret underground torture room. Whew. I exhaled to try and calm myself down. Oh, I remember now. When I was a little girl, Kasai used to love making me feel scared. He often told me scary stories about vi uh, various horrible things. I recalled his story about the secret torture room of the Sonazaki family. According to the story, there was a well in the torture room for dumping bodies in. There was a pile of tortured corpses at the bottom of the well, and resentful moans could be heard echoing from there. And about halfway down the well, there was a different tunnel, which was a secret passage leading into the distant mountains. That bit was from Mion's telling of the story. It was probably an amalgamation, uh, <laughs> amalgamation of tellings from different relatives. The room was supposed to be a huge secret, but everyone got loose lips at the chance to have fun scaring the young successor. Mion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing Mion must have heard it, but yeah, it's got to be in another room, because Mion definitely would have reacted if it was happening in front of her. Mion didn't reply, but I saw her bite her lip. 
あんたは叩かないでもねあんたが不愉快だとばあさんをもっと叩くかもしれない今度は無知なんかじゃなくてそそこの奥暗がりにも牢屋があるでしょうその中ミオンポイントウィークリー I walked down to where her finger indicated. A light bulb lit up the cell. It was a lot smaller than the one Mion was in. It was very shallow, and I didn't even need to open the door to see how tiny it was. Of course, there's no well in there. I became angry, assuming that she lied to me. But after considering it, I didn't actually think she would at this point. I opened the door and walked in. I noticed something immediately. There was an opening right in the middle of the cell. This opening was naturally disguised. The way the rocks and the shadows were positioned perfectly hid the well. The tip of a rock inside of the cell concealed the entrance. Unless you went in, you'd never notice. But it was such a shallow cell that nobody would even think of going in. Besides, the bars allow you to see the inside well enough. The cell is not even a few meters deep, so it would only take a glance to see everything. Nobody would think of unlocking the door and walking in. But walking in was the only way anyone could find the well. Furthermore, there were many cells in this huge cave. Who think that one of them was hiding a secret well? The inside of the well was dark. I couldn't see anything. But every little noise I made produced echoes. I could tell this was a very deep well. I brought a flashlight from the torture room and shone it down the well. It almost looked like a vertical tunnel. Obviously, a man made one at that. There were wedges on the wall like a ladder, and they looked as if they were inviting me to descend. It's kind of ironic that the secret escape route from an underground torture room ended up being a well that takes you even further down. You had no way of knowing whether it would take you to freedom or to hell. Furthermore, there were the tortured bodies of past victims at the bottom. Who would be able to go down this well without hesitation? Nobody in their right mind could go down this well to look for a secret tunnel, hearing the voices of the dead all the while. Mion was in the middle of the world. You were 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 in the m i d I went back to the torture room and then returned to the cave, pushing the wheelchair containing the hag. Mion screamed. シオンバッチャを落とすけ落とすんじゃないよ。捨てるんだよ。Oh my gosh, she's so cold about it. もう死んでるしね。Damn, like, this has got to be so messed up, messed up from Mion's point of view. Like, that's her sister. And, like, yeah, her sister has her quirks, but, like, for Mion to see Shion just casually talk about this must be really messing with her. <laughs> さっきの拷問で死んだんじゃないよ。多分。ばあさんはスタンガンで死んだんだよ。心臓麻痺とかで。ひどい。なんなら、死後の鬼ババの世話もする私は構わないけどね。ん ?Oh my gosh.Mion covered her ears and shook her head.Everything I said seemed to bother Mion.Her own life wasn't guaranteed at this point. しよ。どうして、こんなことを。さーて、どうしてだと思います ?Nobody said anything for a while, but the silence was soon broken. サトシ。Oh, oh, don't say that. 敵討ちってこと。敵討ちになったかも。わかいきなり後ろからバチンだったから。何が何やらわかんないうちにご臨終だったろうし。<笑>ねえ、ミオン。今こうして思い返すと。私はやっぱりばあさんを殺すだけの理由があったように思うのなぜかわかる単にサトシ君を殺した張本人だからってだけじゃないよ。So are we gonna learn whether that actually happened? Like, did she actually, did the grandma kill Satoshi? It still hasn't been confirmed yet. She was just assuming this. それは嘘をついたから !I slapped the hag's head. あんたも言ったよね。Oh no. 私が爪を剥がせばすべて許すって。Oh no. Oh, m i o n だから私は爪を剥がしたんだよ3枚もそれでけじめがついたってことになったんだよねでも約束は守られなかったサトシ君はやっぱり消されてしまったどうしてどういうことなの I continued to slap the hag's head. Her blood was all over my hand by then, and it felt gross. 
I tried to wipe it off on her clothes, but then her hair got on my hand. And, that, and there's again, like I said, about how it just like the grandma just can't seem to like, what's that? What's that Shakespeare play? Is it Macbeth? I think or Lady Macbeth. It's like she tries to scrub the blood and the blood doesn't go away. It's kind of like that, but it's like her grandma is on her and she just can't get it off. Like the sins of what she did. Or maybe I'm just looking too much into it. I ran to the sink in the torture room and washed my hands with a brush. When I was done, I went back to Mion's cell. Uh-oh, in her eyes, Mion's a liar too. そしてこうも言ったよね。サトシ君の失踪の理由はその先本家は何も知らないと。Oh, there it is. Lied, 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 lied. My shouts echo throughout the cave. I was breathing heavily. I felt like I used up all of my all of the air in my lungs. Demo. The hag didn't keep her promise. She said she'd forgive everyone, but she lied. She didn't forgive. She didn't forgive Satoshi Kun. God damn! Say it again! This actress is amazing. I don't speak Japanese, but for her to jump back from Chion to Mion and the sound, like, I can tell. I can tell the emotion in her voice without even, like, being able to, you know, understand the language. I kicked the hag's leg repeatedly. Each time I kicked, the wheelchair made a squeaky noise. Ha, ha, ha. I ran out of breath and kneeled down. Mio was still covering her ears and was now shaking. There were tears in her eyes. And then she just snaps. She just snaps back to sounding really sweet. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so I mean, based on that and based on what we know happens later, either Mion did lie and Shion found out, or Shion just won't accept. Maybe the demon took over Shion's mind and is like, she's lying. And that's why she dragged Keiichi down and was like, I'm gonna kill him in front of you. Oh my gosh. Oh, get hype, man. Can't wait to see what happens next. I wasn't planning to kill the hag so quickly. I was going to kill her anyway, but it was too soon. People would normally assume that the Sonazaki family operates as a hierarchy, but that's not true. It's actually more like a system of government. Several ministries stem from the main family, and each forms a hierarchy of its own. These ministries don't communicate with one another. The people who belong to a given ministry don't know what other ministries are doing. That way, the Sonazaki family's dealings are kept perfectly secret. Of course, the most important people in the family govern several ministries. They know, of course, about their own ministries. And they know a little bit more about the ministries their relatives run. But none of them know everything. There are ministries that work in the open. Oh my god, when you say a word over and over, it doesn't even seem like a word anymore. There are ministries that work unseen. And there are some smaller ones that Oreo runs herself. Mion seems to know about most of them, but she doesn't necessarily know them all. In fact, she didn't know about the curse. Considering that, the fact the hag died before I could interrogate her is a huge loss. The 
the head of the Kimiyoshi family, was the one who called the main house most often after the fifth year's curse. My father called the second most. My parents were still high in the hierarchy, but the stir caused by my mother's disownment still hung over us, so we got treated as outcasts. So the fact my father received so many calls proved how much the hag valued us despite the distance at which we were kept, demonstrating her own two-faced respect for both sides of the coin. My father seems to be in charge of the Intelligence Bureau. He reported police information, gossip, and rumors going around in the Yakuza business to the hag. He silences, stirs, and distorts that information at her request. By the way, my servant Kasai is an old friend of my father's. That must be, what Ka uh, that must be why Kasai knows many things. But I don't know if my father is involved in the curse's execution. My assumption is that although he gathered information on the police investigation about the case, he wasn't involved in the execution itself. The fact that my father and the hag have this close connection isn't widely known. People know she uses his information network, but they don't look very far beyond that. In the same way, it's possible that a curse execution team exists under the hag's direct control. People just aren't aware of it. Ooh, she's starting to suspect... Oh, she said that she doesn't think her father's part of it. What if she does start to... She just goes on a rampage and just kills, like, her whole family. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, that is going to do it for this episode. Holy crap, a lot happened. So we are going to have all the stuff that's going to happen later. Her um, luring Keichi to, uh, to the house. Um, at some point, she's going to kill Kimiyoshi. Holy shit, at some point, she's going to kill Rika and Sadako. Oh my gosh, are we actually going to see that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can handle that. Okay, I gotta stop. Uh, okay, we'll save that for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one. Bye, guys.